it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I'm a galactic and an intuitive astrologer and I want to talk about the new moon in Cancer that is coming up next week. Now this is going to be taking place on either the 5th or the 6th of July depending where you are in the world. For us in the UK it's at 11.57pm so literally minutes before midnight and what I do with these videos is I bring in some of the key themes that are coming through the astrological chart and then also bring in a layer of fixed star, galactic and cosmic alignments as well, just to sort of bring um, bring out or lay out sort of the energies that we are dealing with and some of the um, key themes that are coming forward. A new moon is when the sun and the moon align at exactly the same point in the chart. Now we're always interested at the times of new and full moons at looking at what else is going on in the chart but I will start with the moon and the sun themselves and this is happening at 14 degrees 23 minutes of Cancer. Now we have had an incredibly intense Gemini season. So we're now out of the Gemini season. The sun is in Cancer, the moon is in Cancer. We still have a lot of air in the chart, but we are really working with this beautiful Cancer energy now for the next few weeks. And this is a real shift in energy. Now, Cancer is the fourth sign of the zodiac. It rules the fourth house, which is the house of the home of um, childhood, of our roots and foundations, and it is cardinal water. So, you know, we are very much in the realms of emotions and feelings when we're working with cancer. And, you know, after this really frenetic time um, that we've had with such strong Gemini, where everything has all been about speed and information and being very much based in the head and the mind. This is a really beautiful invitation to really come within and to connect with your feelings and emotions and to really try not disconnect from the head and the mind, but really come into the heart and into your inner world. Because of course, cancer is represented by the crab. And if we think about the crab, the crab has got a really hard outer shell, but a very soft inside. So, you know, there's themes of protection coming through here. And um, the crab itself is a really interesting creature because it carries its home on its back. So effectively, it has everything that it needs to protect itself and to feel safe. And um, the crab is also quite unique in the way it can move because it can move in all directions, you know. So if it senses danger and the crabs are very, very alert to danger and what's going on around them, if it senses that something may be about to harm them, they can sort of move out the way very quickly and sort of almost sidestep the risk. And um, so, you know, this might be something that we are being encouraged to do perhaps at this time and over the next few weeks to really, you know, be alert, be aware of what's going on and be ready to just sort of get out the way if necessary. You know, crabs are incredibly resilient as well. They are very um, much into self-preservation and they're very adaptable so they can thrive in any environment that they find themselves in, whether that's in the water, whether that's in land, whether that's on the rocks, on the sand, they can basically adapt to wherever they are. So again, you know, these are themes and traits that might be useful and we might be sort of working on becoming more adaptable and more um, and being able to tune into our environment much more than perhaps, you know, we have been doing, especially being so much in the head in Gemini season. But Cancer is, as I said, a very intuitive sign. Cancer is all about the emotions and feelings and coming in to connect with your inner emotional world. And, you know, that is something that not all of us are able to do and perhaps we've not been encouraged to do that and um, but this is a time where we can really start to explore our feelings because you know the truth is our feelings don't lie they can't lie and our feelings are incredibly powerful if we are allowed to express them and um, 
you know, the we can run into trouble when we are not allowed to express them or we are feel we're fearful of expressing them or somehow, you know, we're encouraged not to because if we repress emotions, that is when we can really find problems in our physical world and in our physical body. The truth is our emotions are sacred and they are one of the biggest gifts of being human because there are so many star systems out there where emotions don't even exist. So, you know, we are encouraged to really explore how valuable our emotions are and how, you know, they can really be such a strong indicator for how we're navigating the world and everything that is going on around us. So the moon is the ruling planet of Cancer and therefore is incredibly strong, strengthened at this new moon. Of course, new moons are all about new beginnings because it is the beginning of a cycle. So it is very much a time of reset and sort of coming back to um, the beginning, if you will, if you wish to. But being able to really trust in what you're feeling, being able to surrender to what you're feeling, don't resist what you're feeling and really go with the flow, which is very much what we are doing when we're working with strong water. Um, but not to be um, fooled because although this is water, a water sign, we it is a cardinal sign. So there is a lot of strength, there is a lot of action and there is a lot of drive to get things going and to make things happen. So although we are very much in a more gentle period working with cancer, you know, we are feeling soft, we are feeling more nurtured, we're looking for ways to nourish ourselves, to have more compassion, to go with the flow perhaps to surrender a lot more to what's going on and to come into the heart space you know there is a lot of strength here as well and of course water ultimately is incredibly healing and incredibly cleansing if we think about the waters of the womb which give us life if we think about the tears you know which is how we express our emotions our sorrow our pain and our joy and happiness if you think about water being how we wash ourselves water is essential to keep us alive as well we need water to survive and to keep us alive and to keep us here it's a vital part of being human as well ultimately you know emotion and feelings are what makes us human if you don't feel if you can't have in have an emotion it's very difficult navigate our 3D world and our human world. And of course, Cancer also represents the mother, the womb, um, very much about holding space, nurturing, growing, caring for, feeding, soothing, comforting. And so, you know, this is a really beautiful energy to be working with and for us at this time, you know, when so much is changing. It is you know we yearn to come back to the home to be looked after to be soothed to be nurtured and even if this hasn't been your experience in this life it's still something that we yearn for and we feel that we need and of course i'm reminded as well you know that it is when we feel safe and cared for and nourished that we can actually express our emotions you know i'm sort of reminded of the um you know the children who are impeccably behaved at school but when they come home you know all hell um is let let loose you know and they can be screaming and shouting but actually i was always told by the teachers at my children's school that this was actually a really positive sign because it meant that they felt safe and able to express themselves and let off steam and sort of process perhaps what they've been sort of going through at school earlier in the day but hadn't really felt safe to let that go and to express it so again you know th th this is a time when we are going to be able to or where, where we're invited to connect with our feelings and to make sure that we acknowledge them and that we honor them and that we you know see how powerful and how valid that they are and with cancer we are sort of guided to our inner light the light that we all carry within which is our guiding light sometimes we feel disconnected from it or we're not encouraged to 
to really honor it or trust it but in actual fact it is the inner light the inner emotion that inner feeling that is possibly often the only thing that we can trust the only thing that is true this is a time for really connecting with the self for you know be feeling more sensitive cancer is a very empathic sign so when you have strong cancer in your chart it's almost like you are plugged into the emotions and the feelings of everything around you whether that's the earth herself whether that's the people you live with the animals the energies and frequencies in your environment in the room that in the room that you are in you know it can feel quite overwhelming and you know, especially if the emotions are deemed to be more negative. So there can be a sense of overwhelm with a strong cancer. But it also, you know, it's important to think to see empathy as a real strength as well, because when you're able to connect with how other people are feeling, you're going to be much more considerate towards them, much more compassionate, much more aware. So again, you know, that is something that brings us all together, that connects us more if we're all able to start to do that. We have this very calm, very soft, very soothing, very cleansing, very healing energy through the new moon. And if we look at the rest of the chart, the nodes are actually incredibly active at this time because they are creating a T-square with the sun and the moon um, with the nodes in Lib Libra and Aries. So when we have nodal activations it really draws us um towards thinking about where it is we are heading in life this is about soul growth soul evolution it's about looking at what we're letting go you know in order for us to move forward but ultimately making moves making decision making plans and having an awareness from for what it is that we need to embrace in order to grow and to evolve so squares can be quite challenging because the energies are slightly um jarring against one, one another obviously cancer wants to sort of be all nourished and nurtured and stay safe and you know connect with the feelings where that whereas Aries is very much about setting out on you know an adventure being the pioneer being very sovereign but also really focusing on the self but it's about how can we embrace both of those and bring them together in order to have the highest expression of our evolution. Jupiter is also activating the nodes in a trine to the south node in Libra and a sextile to the north node in Aries. So this is very much about, Jupiter is about expansion, growth and opportunity and um, with the trine being very harmonious, very supportive. So it's really asking us to consider, you know, how can we benefit, how can we grow how can we expand through letting go some of those sort of themes relating to codependency within relationships and um, situations where there's injustice or things have become out of balance and therefore you know are no longer harmonious how can we grow through releasing those and letting go of those and moving on from those and the um, moon and sun are also in a trine to Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is now retrograde in Pisces. But again, you know, this is very harmonious. And Saturn in Pisces is really asking us to consider how um, we can really master our spiritual selves, how we can connect more with our higher self, how we can use that spiritual wisdom, that spiritual maturity to help us grow and help us become more compassionate and ultimately more in tune with our emotions, which is exactly what this Cancer Moon wants us to do. Mercury is just um, in the early degrees of Leo at this time. So there is an opposition with Pluto in Aquarius. Now, oppositions are tense aspects because there is a real sort of push-pull. Um, but, you know, there's always a kind of encouragement and an invitation to find the middle ground. And Pluto in Aquarius is still very much uncovering things that are no longer working. In Aquarius, it is very much for the collective. And Mercury wants is sort of standing opposite Pluto, literally waiting for all that information to come through. 
but because it's in Leo, there is a real sense here that information that is uncovered or exposed at this time is going to be very much um, sort of in the spotlight because Leo needs to be seen. Leo needs an audience, needs to be admired, needs to have the spotlight. And so it's going to be very hard if information does come up at this time for it to be hidden away because Leo is there shouting out and letting everybody know exactly what is going on. So those are sort of the main aspects that I wanted to pull out of the more traditional astrology. But the galactic astrology is really powerful at this new moon because the sun and the moon at 14 degrees of Cancer are in an exact conjunction to both Sirius A and Canopus in the Carina constellation and in opposition to Vega and then in a trine to a crux. So the sun and the moon and themselves are activating lots of galactic fixed stars. And then I'll talk about Mercury and Uranus um, in a minute. But just to really think about Sirius A, first of all, because that is um, one of the sort of better known stars in um among star seeds and galactic astrologers. Now, Sirius A is known to be our spiritual sun. It is one of the brightest stars in the sky and it's known as the dog star. It's in the Canis Major constellation. And, you know, we associate Sirius A with um, very advanced levels and techniques of healing with more of a focus on the physical body and the physical self as opposed to the emotional one. So, you know, at this time we have got the support because the sun is conjunct. So the sun is empowering, shining a light um, and activating the energies from Sirius. We have this real focus on physical healing, using, advanced, using advanced knowledge, using advanced technologies, much higher levels of consciousness. So all of this is accessible to us if we are ready to receive it and to want to work with it. Uh, being in Cancer, you know, Sirius is very much linked to water and the um, the power that water has to heal, to cleanse, to give life. And um, this is very much also about supporting emotional release and the acknowledgement that if we don't sort of let go and release and express our emotions, as I said earlier, it can create a lot of blocks, which then can create physical problems in the body. So it's a very empowering um, thing to be able to express how you're feeling and to be able to cry if you need to, scream if you need to, as long as it is all sort of pros um, allowed to be done in a safe space. Now we also have a star called Canopus, which is in the Carina constellation. That is also at 14 degrees of Cancer. So this is a really beautiful star. It is, um, it represents the keel of the ship. So there's a very strong, strong sense of, you know, being out at sea, having this safe space of the boat to keep you safe, to tr keep you traveling onwards. And um, there's a real sort of sense of the journey with Kareen, with Kareen Canopus and the journey being an adventure and part of the process. Canopus also represents the spiritual lighthouse. This is very much celestial navigation and a star that has been used by sailors to help them find their way. So, you know, again, it is encouraging us to move forward, but with the knowledge that we have this inner spiritual guidance to light the way. And again, that comes back to that inner light, that inner knowing, that inner guidance that we can really start to rely on, especially with the trine to Saturn as well, you know, which is all about taking that spiritual guidance and that spiritual inner voice really seriously and listening to it and trusting in it and knowing that ultimately it is all serving your greatest and highest good. Canopus is about transformation. It is a star that is here to guide those who seek to know themselves and to explore other realms and new horizons. It's a guide for those people to help them to know more and understand more. And it's also 
really encourages us to understand that, you know, when we're experiencing challenge or pain or anything that is really difficult, that, you know, there is always something positive that will come out of that. So that is the role that cannabis plays when it's active in the chart. So, you know, again, this is really beautiful energy to be working with the sun and the moon at this time. Now, there is an opposition to Vega, which is one of the stars in the Lyra constellation. And Lyra is very much um, linked to our human galactic history. It's the place or the star system where human life was first seeded, where it was first um, originated. And, you know, we have a really strong connection with the Lyrans. And in particular, Vega is part of the Lyra where the divine feminine and the mother god consciousness was allowed to grow and to be explored and to be expressed. So again this is deeply healing energy. There is ancient wisdom coming through from Vega through the opposition almost being shone onto us or being lit up by the sun so that we can start to understand more of what is out there, what is potential and how we can work to heal ourselves. When we have Lyra or any Lyran stars, there is a real sort of focus on frequency, on sound, on music, on singing song um, to heal. The Lyrans and the Vagans in particular work with um, the crystals. They, have, they are responsible for um, creating a lot of the modalities that we work with today, like yoga, Ayurveda, very physical healing techniques. There is also the ability to see energy and to be able to work with frequency for the greater good. So again, this is very deeply intuitive energy coming through, very um, sensitive, very psychic, but very advanced and very evolved. And the trying to a crux is really interesting because crux is the Southern Cross. So again, this is more celestial navigation. It's been used as a guide in the skies. But one of the overriding themes of a crux when it is found in the chart is this theme of sacrifice and the sort of understanding that sometimes, you know, we have to experience pain and challenge and hardship in order to grow. And that, you know, there is always purpose to the pain and the hardship that we experience in this life. And it is almost part of the human condition and the human experience. You know, it is it would be virtually impossible to come and to have a human life without some level of pain and suffering because that is you know part of the experience if you like but there is always a gift there is always purpose and there is always growth that comes through it and so crux and a crux really helps us to understand that and to see that so again with the trine that's just creating this really harmonious supportive aspect and a crux is also about spiritual mastery, spiritual wisdom, and sort of having the ability to just stick to the path, to stay the course, to move through things when they become challenging and to just know and have that inner faith that everything will be all right, which again, you know, takes courage, it takes guts, it takes a much higher sort of um level of consciousness and the ability to see things from a much higher perspective but it is that that is going to really help us through these challenging times because you know it brings that faith again that inner guide that inner knowing that you know there is purpose to all of this even when it does seem really difficult and really painful now there's a lot of talk in the astrology sort of field about Uranus um, Uranus is about to meet with Mars or Mars is about to meet with Uranus um, in, you know, very shortly after the new moon. But in the galactic chart, Uranus is approaching Algol, fixed star Algol in the Perseus constellation. Now, I have shared my thoughts about Algol in a recent video, so I don't want to repeat too much. But this is it is a big deal. You know, there is some really very powerful energy being released when Uranus meets Algol. Of course, Uranus being the planet of breaking through, 
awakening, disrupt, disruption and deconstruction. Yeah. And you know, a lot um, of people fear Algol because of the associations with Medusa, you know, people having their heads cut off, serpent energy. You know, there is a lot of fear around Algol, but it is also about goddess energy, divine feminine energy, the serpent shedding layers, being reborn, transformation, empowerment, being able to really face your fears and realize that actually it isn't as scary as you thought. And often it's through facing your fears that you experience the most growth and expansion. So this is about courage, it's about alchemy, and it's about really working with the shadow and integrating dark and light and really knowing that there cannot be dark without light and vice versa. Um, but as well as the algal activation, which again, you know, is going to be exact in July, we have a an approaching square with Alphard in the Hydra constellation. Now this will be exact in August, but it is very influential already. And Alphard is very much again about the divine feminine energy. This is serpent energy. So this is about shedding layers, shedding skins, shedding versions of the self to experience growth and expansion. It is about transformation. It's about death, life, rebirth. It's about understanding that everything in our world is part of a cycle. But it is also very closely linked to Kundalini energy. And this is the energy that is stored in the base of our spine and is something that when activated, you know, really um, builds up through the main chakra column to be able to so that we can reach enlightenment at the crown chakra and you know again with this square this is potentially quite a challenging intense aspect but it is also about growth and action and something needs to give so again my feeling and I think I probably will do another video about this separately is that we may actually find that a lot of us are going to have kundalini awakenings with this square because Uranus is involved this is very much about waking up the energy that is trapped you know it's in um Taurus so Algol is in Taurus Uranus in Tor is in Taurus so this is about you know, waking up that that has been sleeping that has been hidden that has lain dormant within the earth within our physical bodies but again you know this is um very powerful energy that we're working with so that is something to be bearing in mind and um, there are lots of other galactic alignments but the other one that I just wanted to highlight is Mercury because Mercury is in a con in conjunction with Rho Cancri or Cancri 55 in the Cancer constellation now um, this is really beautiful this is all about um, diamonds and diamond light -like codes and diamond frequencies because Cancri 55 is the diamond planet now I've talked about this before but as we have Mercury coming to align with it and the sun will do so later on in July you know this is all about upgrades to our understanding to our mindset to our way of thinking but again you know as I said earlier on it is about activating that heart center consciousness that um, courage as well to be able to embrace new ways of thinking to be able to express what we think speak up use our voice with courage with pride to be seen to shine and you know this um what's beautiful with the diamond frequencies that are coming through Rho Cancri, Cancri 55 is the fact that again it is just um sort of supporting this shift from the carbon to the crystalline because of course diamonds are created from carbon from coal put under extreme pressure to create the most beautiful exquisite crystal that can reflect light in all directions and actually is incredibly valuable to us on our planet so again you know it's a real metaphor for what we are going through becoming crystalline from more carbon based but having all these activations these dna activations these upgrades you know, helping us to break through blockages helping us to you know start to work with this diamond frequency which sends fractals of light everywhere which can cut through 
anything that may be, may be holding us back. And the rogue cancrans are master healers. So again, you know, there is information coming through the light codes that we can work with to help us heal, to help us come in more into the heart, which is ultimately the way of the fifth dimension. So I've covered everything I think that I wanted to cover. There's always a million things that I think of afterwards, um, but there's a lot for us to be working with here. Um, so I hope you found that useful and that you've resonated with some of it. Maybe, you know, I've given you something new to think about, a new angle perhaps. And, you know, if you are interested in my work, I have got a website, spiralbright.co.uk. I send out a monthly newsletter as well, just sort of talking about the energies of the month ahead. So sign up for that if you haven't already. You can do that through my website as well. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, for supporting my work and um, yeah, for sharing this journey and this passion with me. So I will be back very soon.